Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and whenever it is that you're listening to this. Um, a few of us have just decided to gather here and record a service, knowing that this is not our norm. Um, we are looking out into literally an empty sanctuary, which is kind of a bummer. It, it, it makes me sad. I'm really excited for when we can gather together again, um, hoping and praying that it will be soon. But for now, we just pray that this time here um, just gives you a little bit of a sense of familiarity and that that would um, come and just give um, some peace to your heart, the peace that comes from God. Um, so right now, I just pray that you would um, join with us in, as we worship this morning. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again increase in us we pray unveil why we're made come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls holy spirit come invade us now 
Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, well, this month in the children's department, we have been talking all about Jesus' parables. And while we haven't been together to talk about all of them, I hope that you guys have been exploring them together as a family and really um, soaking in those truths about how um, God has made each of us to do something really great and that he is he loves us and he pursues us. This week, our big idea is that God forgives us. And sometimes I think when we think about forgiveness, it's easy to think that it's the same as maybe the way that we forgive each other. Um, somebody hurts me, I can say that I forgive them. But truthfully, sometimes I, I remember the wrong things that people have done to me. I, rem I hang on to them, and it takes a lot of work to move past that. Um, the good news is this morning, that that is not the way that God's forgiveness works. No matter how good we try to be, no matter how perfect we try to do everything, each one of us, we mess up. We hurt ourselves, we hurt other people. And um, you guys, that's called sin. And so when we talk about God forgiving us, that means that he takes those things that we've done, the wrongs, the hurts that we have um, committed against other people, and that, that causes some distance. That's like, it makes a barrier between us and God, and it really interferes with his ability to work in our lives and our ability to respond to him and to love him the way that we want to. But the good news is that when we are willing to confess those sins and we're willing to ask for his forgiveness, he is able to forgive in a way that we can't. So all of the elementary kids this week receive some supplies that they can try this at home too. But when we ask God for forgiveness, he is more than willing to pour that out for us and we are just overwhelmed in his grace. And that sin, those things in our lives that we have done, he is able to make them completely disappear and it's like they were never there to begin with. So I just want you to remember this week, as, as you mess up, as you make mistakes, ask for forgiveness and know that God is just, he's there and he is ready and willing to pour it out on you. We love you. We miss you. I hope you guys are having a good week. Well, welcome. And it's, it's good to be with you, even if it's in a video format. I'm just curious how everybody's spending their time, and are you, are you all having great times in your home, streaming videos and doing all those interesting things? I, I saw some interesting Facebook posts. I, I saw um, Becky Eichhorn posted uh, some cor coronavirus pickup lines, and one of them is, uh, you can't have virus without you and I. <laughs> okay. Nobody laughed. Uh, that's because nobody's here. Uh, 8 p.m. is the time you change from your daytime pajamas to your nighttime pajamas. So there's some, some important instructions for all of us to keep in mind. Uh, this week, typically we would have been in Luke 7, 36 through 50. And uh, we, we talked about that in the podcast. And I'd encourage you to take some time to, to listen to the podcast that Mara and I did as we, we talked about the parable of, uh, of the, the, the slave that was forgiven and, and, and being thankful. And I wondered if I should use that or, or do something different. I, I thought about talking about hope and fear and peace. And, and I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of fear. I, I believe we'll get through this. And, and I believe God's still at work even in this. And, and so I just thought I'd spend a few minutes talking about the church and just some reminders as we move through this. Uh, the, the, the first reminder is this, the church is a people, not a building. Uh, j just because we're not gathered in this building does not mean we are not the church. It reminds me of a story of a guy that was on a deserted island. They, they picked him up, and he had three buildings. They asked him what the buildings were, and he said, well, that's my church, and that's my, my home. And they said, well, what's the third building? He said, well, that's the church I used to go to. And, and church is not more than a building. Uh, church is more than a time to gather. We, we miss our gatherings. Uh, on, on Facebook, and I'd encourage you not right now because if you go now on Facebook, you'll get caught up on the cat videos and pet videos and you won't come back. But there's a, a Chris Farley video 
where he enters into a room and, and it's been posted what every pastor will be like when the, this virus is over. I hope we all come back like that. I hope we all come back slapping hands and excited to be back. But, but the church is more than a time that we gather. The church has a mission. Uh, one writer said the church is not an end in itself, but is constituted and through, it, and through its participation in God's mission. In other words, God's mission defines who we are. And God's mission for the church is to develop followers who are being transformed in the image of Jesus Christ. That the purpose of this church is not just to support a building, not just to support a pastor, not just to support an organization, but that we be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ and that we be moved these, as we're transformed into our community to demonstrate the compassion and mercy of Jesus. We're a church when we're doing those things. When we're being transformed, when we're being moved into the community, we are truly the church. Of course, when we're not doing those things, we cease being the church and become nothing more than a social organization. And so the church is God's move into the world. It's God's move that changes you and I. It's, it's God's move that changes our communities. And we see this in the book of Acts. Uh, the book of Acts is all about the, the move of God, and we see this particularly uh, after uh, Pentecost in Acts 2, 42 through 47. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. You know, there's something significant to see in this passage. The church was growing, God was moving, not because of the organizational, organizational skills of the early leaders, uh, not because there were so many different church options that they could gather at. There, there was not a church on every corner. There wasn't a First Baptist Church of Jerusalem or a Jerusalem Nazarene Church. It's not because they had formal curriculum. They didn't even have the New Testament. They had no Bible on their phones. They had no podcast. They had no YouTube. They didn't have any innovative conferences. Peter and John didn't go to Catalyst Conference in Samaria. Uh, they didn't even have a building. Uh, just a people through which God was moving. And day by day, people were being saved. Now, now the key is found in verse 42. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I reached out to our resident Greek expert, David Smith, and asked him to give me a translation of, of Acts 2.42. And, and David notes that, noted that Luke uses the word the before each of the elements he describes. In, in other words, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayer. This could have been a common way of writing, but it might have also been a way of emphasizing these words, emphasizing these, these things that they were doing, that it wasn't common. When I think of that, I think of, think of your favorite Buckeye in the NFL when he's introduced. He says, I went to the Ohio State University. So it's a way of emphasizing the importance of discipleship, fellowship, the breaking of bread to prayer. These were different activities that they were doing. It was different than the world, and they were being formed in these activities. The, the, the phrase continually devoted is, is how it begins, and, and this is written in the present active voice. It's presently actively being done. It's not something that was a past tense thing. It was not something they did occasionally. It was something that was essential to the mission, essential to the move of God. They were being informed in their Bible study, in their prayer, in their fellowship, in the breaking of bread. And they were doing this together, that the church was together. You say, well, stop right there, pastor. We can't 
be together? How can we be presently, actively, continually devoting ourselves together to discipleship, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer together when we're in quarantine? It's back to where we started. Church is a people. It's not a building. Church is not simply a time we gather. Church is the move of God, and God is not quarantined. In fact, right now, some of you have more time for prayer, for the word, for others, for the breaking of bread than you typically have at other times. You know, it's kind of interesting in this passage, the, the, the breaking of bread most likely refers to communion, that, that they were practicing communion in Acts 2.42. And you say, well, pastor, how can we have communion together? And we've talked about communion as a training. That, that all the times we've received communion in, in this room that I'm recording in has been a training for you to see that God is present in those significant moments of relationship that you have outside these walls. And so in, in many ways, we're taking the training of communion here and transposing it to our house. And when we're having meals, we can recognize the presence of Jesus and in His presence experience His transforming grace. And we can be actively present with each other even in the midst of quarantine. We live in the most connected time in history. I grew up with three black and white channels with an antenna that we had to move and a party line. Now we have Facebook and FaceTime and TikTok, what's TikTok? Anybody, somebody tell me what TikTok is? I don't even really know what it is. I hope it's not something bad. Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Zoom, email, text, and we can even pick up our telephones and make a call. Uh, our church is organizing many opportunities. Uh, we, we, we have a Zoom prayer meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., and I'd encourage you to, to pay attention to the emails. But, but, but I don't want you to rely on your church to organize opportunities. You can do this as well. Zoom is free for up to 40 minutes. What, what if you were to do a Zoom meeting with someone from the church and serve communion together? Uh, communion does not have to come from the church. You can have bread and grape juice in your homes, and I'm giving you authority to do that together and experience God's grace together. But not only can we continue the move of God to transform us, this can be done in a time when God moves through us in our neighborhood. I read an article recently called How Churches Become Missional, and crisis is often the crucial starting point in renewing or finding mission. The author writes that after a crisis is responded to in a spirit of humility and discovery, a missional culture can change. Uh, These crises take the form of risk, uh, and it forces us to move beyond what we can handle comfortably, comfortably and easily. And churches can effectively follow God's lead even in the midst of crisis. We're in one of those moments. For, for the time being, we cannot rely upon old paths. And we could take a break and we could say, well, when things get back to normal, I'll get back to church. Or we can say, I'm going to allow God to use this crisis to move me in fresh and creative and perhaps uncomfortable ways. That's how God moves in the Acts church. In, in the Acts church, the church was moved through persecution. And it was persecution that moved the church from their comfort zones into an uncomfortable but a move of God. COVID-19 may be a way God moves this church into our neighborhoods. Now, can I stop and just for a moment and clarify? I don't believe that God brought persecution on the early church. I don't believe that God brought COVID-19 to punish or disturb or to move his church. But God uses these circumstances to move his church. Marysville Nazarene has a hub in many neighborhoods throughout Union County. What if God wanted to activate these hubs and love you see and love your neighbor at work during this time of quarantine? Maybe form back war- backyard social distance fellowship parties. 
In my neighborhood, I've seen all sorts of, of fires burning in backyards and neighbors are gathering together with their kids. We can do this and maintain social distance. Quarantine forces us to love our neighbors because they're the ones we spend the most time with. Well, we can respond to this crisis by reaching out to our elderly neighbors, to people with special needs. You can be the hands and feet of Jesus in your neighborhood in this time. But you're more creative than I am. How can you be the move of God in your neighborhood in this time? I grew up in one of the most popular television shows when I was a kid was Hogan's Heroes. And Hogan's Heroes, and, and you can ask me when this is all over, I had a great dream about Hogan's Heroes at one time, and you can ask me when we're back at church, and I'll tell you about it. It's the greatest dream ever. But Hogan's Heroes are a, dro- a group of POWs who are stuck in Germany. I know, that just has sitcom written all over it. But they were still connected. And behind enemy lines, they were still accomplishing the mission. We're being invited to join God in this move. Amy sang the Wren Collective, Build Your Kingdom Here. And it's interesting, I had this in my notes, I was going to reference this. Don't tell me God's not still at work. We, we didn't coordinate any of this. And, and I was thinking about that song as I, as I prepared this little message. In the Wren Collective song, it says, Build your kingdom here, change the atmosphere, win this nation back. This will not happen through a great move of God in sanctuaries across this nation. I hope we have a great move of God in our sanctuaries. But the move of God will occur in living rooms and neighborhoods throughout our country. If we want to win our neighborhoods back, it does not, it does not begin here. It begins in your living rooms, in your kitchen, in your front yards, in your backyards. So be presently active in prayer and discipleship and fellowship. Be looking for God's presence and allow God to move where you're planted. Now I referred to the the Chris Farley video and I hope we come back celebrating. And I hope we don't just celebrate because we finally get together again. But, But I hope we're celebrating what God has done during this time away. That when we come back in this room, this room will be crackling with stories of how God has moved in your life, in your family's life, in your neighborhood's life, in your community's life, even though you've been stuck at home. I'm going to close this now with prayer. I'm going to use the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God bless.